right. So we're here at the uh, ID Tech X show here with a uh, Dex Matt. Hi. Mm -hmm. right, so who are you? Hello, I'm Colin with Dex Matt. So, so, so what do you do? We produce um, conductive materials out of carbon nanotubes. We've basically adapted polymer processing using carbon nanotubes as the polymer, so that we can make continuous um, threads or continuous thin films. Um, that are electrically conductive and also lightweight, um, flexible, high tensile strength and durable. So uh, right here you're showing... Uh... Yeah, this here we just have a looping video and this is showing a, a couple of different things. Um, this, this beginning of the video is showing um, the, the, a, a bit of part of the process of producing the, the filaments. So this is off camera, this is a, a solution which we're extruding through a nozzle of many small holes to create solid filaments of carbon nanotubes. Um, just carbon nanotubes, there's no filler or epoxy. Um, it's just um, a, a, a solid thread of aligned nanotubes. And then we can take those individual filaments and um, uh, twist them together or braid them together into thicker cable um, so that we can, we can make uh, yarn that's anywhere from a, a single filament of around 20 micrometers in diameter up to um, a thick braid of a millimeter in diameter or more. So is this special nobody else is doing this? Um, there are a couple other other um, companies making carbon nanotube uh, thread. We're the only one um, making using it, doing it, I believe, with this um, liquid-based, fluid-based process. Um, and so, so mm -hmm. right here in, the, in your video, you were showing. Uh, yeah, this, this, the, is what, this is this is kind of like your machine. Yeah, exactly. So, so um, a moment ago, you saw the the threads being extruded from the liquid phase. This is now after they've solidified, and this is just um, winding from the collection drum. Um, onto a smaller spool. This is a, a, a picture of the machine that we use to process it into a thicker rope. We're twisting together many filaments um, into, as you see, a thicker um, yarn um, that we're winding up on. So you have here. some different demos that's what, right here. That's what we. Uh -huh. You yep. have a, so you have that one. What's the other one? Yeah. So this so this is about 50 filaments twisted into a yarn. This um, is the braid you just saw in the video um, being um, uh, assembled into so is this it strong? thick braid. Yeah, it's quite strong. It's uh, a little bit stronger than steel. Uh, much stronger than copper, and so um, the the applications uh, we we think it's going to be very useful for multifunctional applications. If you need um, conductivity, but also mechanical strength uh, or durability or lightweight, uh, then it'll be a useful replacement for metals in applications where you really need more than one of those properties. So, is this how we're going to be making the space elevator? Well, hopefully, this is this is not quite strong enough yet. Um, but if we continue to improve. Uh, the properties that we're getting, that would be a fantastic use for it. It was one of the stories, right? They wanted to use carbon nanotubes. Yeah, this, this is the material that they, that they you know, people talk always about. talk about to, to make a space elevator. Um, you need a certain amount of, a certain amount of uh, strength to make that. Uh, so uh, carbon nanotubes on an individual molecule level are extremely strong, um, strong enough to do that. Um, there's a, a great challenge in making a material that's this large, a macroscopic material that has properties that are similar to those of the single molecules. And so um, the challenge is to arrange them, put them together into the material um, in such a way that they reinforce each other that you can get, um, even if you can get a, a, a significant fraction of the single molecule properties, you already have a pretty useful material. That's how you make ropes, right? When you do a rope, there's sure, a whole yeah. bunch of filaments that are put together in some kind of structure. Exactly, yeah, into so a larger, larger a, structure. a rope of this. Exactly. You, you're done. Yeah. yeah, more or less. Right? Mm -hmm. We can go to space for cheap. That's one of the applications. <laughs> yeah. And what is the... the so this, so this is a similar material, but here we've we've um, just made it into the form of a, of a, a, a strip so that it's a standalone film. Um, and you can see, uh, I don't mean to block the lens like that, but um, this is standalone film. It's also very flexible. It's quite thin. It's around 20 micrometers in thickness. Um, but it's also electrically conductive and um, extremely um, flexible. Durable? Um, yeah, quite durable as well. It's not going to rip? Nope. Uh, it'll, it's, it uh, has alignment to it, so it will... If I tore it down down along the direction of alignment like this, it would it would tear like a, like string cheese. But if I try to tear it across the direction of alignment, it's quite they're, tough. They're basically good luck. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Right. Right. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, so it is. It's quite. It's it's very flexible. It's got very good fatigue life, um, and also very good tensile strength. So what would be the application for those? So one of the one of the main applications that we're that we're excited about for this is actually in shielding um, for uh, electromagnetic. I'm sorry, for electromagnetic shielding for um, uh, for data cables, for coaxial cables, particularly in aerospace applications, or really any application where weight is important. Um, it's uh, it um, is much lighter than copper conductors, and so in it. Uh, 
in applications where weight savings are extremely critical, uh, aerospace, if you save, uh, if you make a, a, an airplane or a satellite lighter, you save on fuel, and that's uh, quite a significant um, cost savings. Um, and so that's one of the uh, one of the, the primary applications we're interested in, especially for the this film. So you're um, talking for, about we, space, uh, each yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, we can, and we can do that with the thread as well. For this, this for example, is a coaxial cable in which we've replaced the copper braid that formed the, uh, the shielding layer with a carbon nanotube braid. You can also replace that with our carbon nanotube film that you just saw. Um, the, uh, another application that we're interested in for this thread, because it's, it's thin, um, it's durable, you can use it um, in sewing. You could stitch this into a fabric and it's flexible enough and durable enough to be part of uh, um, an article of clothing or other uh, wearable electronic device. And then it's uh, a conductive. It is electrically conductive, exactly. So that means you can use it to send data around. Uh, yeah, send, send, send data or send, send power. Um, it's not quite as conductive as copper, but it's much more durable. And so uh, if you need that durability or if you need flexibility, um, it's a, a very useful alternative to metal. Machine washable? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, unbreakable? Not unbreakable, but pretty tough. Uh, stronger than steel in terms of tensile strength. Uh, are you doing like, uh, because we're in the U.S., a bulletproof vest or nothing to do um, with? with? So I think I think for bulletproof vests, you'd better off sticking with Kevlar. This is not quite as strong as Kevlar, and you don't need a bulletproof vest to be electrically conductive. Um, but if you do, if you, if in fact you want to incorporate electronics or some other devices into bulletproof vests, then you could. Um, incorporate this into a Kevlar vest and, uh, as a conductive element. You wouldn't make the entire vest out of it. Um, it'd be more expensive and you don't need it to be electrically conductive. And this is what you were strong. talking about? The, the yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a spool of the thread or, or a close-up of the braided um, thread that's, that's been combined into a thicker cable um, or a close-up of the, of the tape. We have a, a website um, at an online store, dexmat.com, if uh, you'd like to. So people can go, go and buy stuff. People can go buy stuff. What, and, what they and can look buy? One the of these. They can buy any of these property, any of these products here. Yeah, uh, the tape in several different widths. Uh, you they have can customers buy already. The yarn. Um, yeah, we don't have any. It's not really being used in any final products, but we have a few. We are, you know, basically selling to people who are making prototypes and are tr um, interested in trying it out for their applications, and we're. We're hoping that some of those Somebody's will... Somebody's playing badminton with it. <laughs> yes, Does that so mean the, the badminton racket so can send signal about where you hit the ball? <laughs> that, well, we didn't, we didn't construct it in such a way as to do that, but yes, this is a badminton racket that is strong with our carbon energy. Does power. that make you have the best badminton racket on the market? What do you think of it, Dimitri? I think badminton? probably yes. You do? It's definitely the most expensive badminton <laughs> racket on the market. <laughs> the most expensive? So it's not cheap technology what you have? No, it's not. No? But it enables potentially embedding sensors and electronics directly into your strings. So you may be able to get information that you would not normally be able to get from a typical uh, non-conductive type of string. And a typical material that's conductive would not survive the stresses about hitting this uh, birdie multiple times. Whereas the nanotube material, can, it's abrasion resistant and it's much stronger than a typical metal wire. So on your store, and uh, so hi, so who are you? Uh, my name is Dimitri, I'm uh, the CEO of Dexmat, and uh, I'm here with Colin to show off our materials and try to get some... So on your store, how much is one of these? So this material um, right now is uh, $100 per meter. Uh, per meter, uh, yeah. As we said, expensive. Um, because your machines seem to be going really fast. That's like a hundred dollar every second. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> no. Um, but but so it's it, uh, um, a lot of that cost is is basically the labor of you know us us doing the synthesis and then also running the machines. Um, so we aren't we aren't really producing at large scale yet. We're producing let's say hundreds of meters of this per per month, uh, but not any more than that. Um, so so what, a at a larger scale, that price will will go down. Yeah. What do you need to do to go large? Well, What's next? We need to find customers that are ready to develop this into a product that is actually you know, going to be sold to either consumer market or used in a final system, for example, uh, in aerospace or in an e-textile application that's going to be produced in large quantities. And then at that point, we'd be ready to scale up our process. And we think that this material, the $100 a meter material, we are able to produce it at under a dollar a meter if we, you know, scale up. If we were producing a lot of it, so. Yeah. You're able to do if there's more, a big order? Yeah. If there's a big order and we scale up our process so that we're producing it in larger quantities. Because it's going so fast. Mm -hmm. Not yet? Well, this is uh, making the rope, so it's spinning fast, but if ah, you can see, okay. the collection process is not, you know, the fastest. 
it, with more sophisticated equipment, it can go a lot faster. Uh, this is you know pretty small scale equipment, so it just goes a meter per minute or so. What's the what's the materials? Where they come from? How do you what happens? You just make them out of no. So we we buy carbon nanotubes from suppliers, and um, we have a, a couple of suppliers we've worked with. Um, uh, we're uh, we can can make this out of any not any carbon nanotube material. It has to be sufficiently high quality. Um, and particularly the, the, mo the molecular lattices have to be um, low in defect. So unfortunately we aren't able to use the cheapest sources of carbon nanotubes, but um, manufacturers of uh, if, uh, high quality carbon nanotubes we're able to use in our process. Um, uh, and so, uh, yeah. We carbon wanna, nanotubes is a cool kind of thing, right? Is I it, think so, yeah. And uh, is it the ultimate material or what is the story about it? It's. No, it's not the ultimate material because it's not the best in terms of strength, it's not the best in terms of conductivity, but what it is is it's a material that has a combination of properties that is unlike any other material. So if you have a, an application that requires you to have something conductive and flexible at the same time, this is the best material you can use for that. If you need something that is conductive and lightweight, this is going to work better than any metal wire. So it's really a combination of properties that it has that is unique, but it's not the best in any one single property. So uh, it's going to be everywhere? How soon? Probably, <laughs> well, <laughs> anywhere that you need um, that multifunctional material. Hopefully, hopefully if we um, uh, find a, a good way to make these cables, then it'll be in uh, everywhere in aerospace at any rate, um, and maybe, maybe more places as well. We're, we're, realistically, we're probably talking five to ten years before you see any sort of widespread adoption. But it could be in consumer products within a year or so, uh, for example, in the wearable space, because that is just ready to go. With cables, it's... Uh, what do you, you, know, have, what do you have? What's going on here? This is a um, wristband where we sewed in a couple of LEDs, and they're just connected with the carbon nanotube yarn. Um, and it demonstrates that you can use this carbon nanotube yarn to connect electronics. That you can, can show inside, kind of, or? Yeah, so this is just a coin cell battery, and uh, you can see that there's some CNT yarn on the back of it, and so that is what's using, connecting the LEDs to the coin cell. Uh, you could obviously have a more sophisticated setup where you have uh, more sophisticated electronics. It doesn't have to be LEDs. It can be anything that you need to provide power to. Um, and this can be put into a sewing machine. This was done by hand and needle, but it can be uh, run through a machine. There's another um, a wearable application that if you, I don't know if, uh, if your video of our video will work out very well, and let me get to the correct uh, portion of it, but this is a, a video of a test that was done um, by someone who used our fiber, excuse me, to... Are you going the wrong way? Nope, to, um, to stitch our fiber into a, a bit of a spacesuit fabric, and this is then um, covering it with dust and then running a current through the, kind of the carbon nanotubes to repel the dust. And so this just is the current. Uh, the current, just a, a, an AC current through the fiber. This is just demonstrating how you can you can really stitch that that filament into um, fabric. Into it's very high voltage, very so that's what causes yeah. it to actually uh, repel the material. And what you do is nobody else is doing. Uh, who's who's the biggest carbon nanotube companies out there? What are you do, what are you doing? Well, the biggest ones are producing the nanotubes. So there's a couple of companies that produce uh, ton quantities of carbon nanotubes, and there's also a couple of companies that produce uh, fibers and films. And so those companies uh, include companies like Nanocomp, General Nano. Uh, there's companies. Those are the U.S. companies. There's a couple of companies in China, Japan, um, but really. We're the ones that make the highest conductivity material. So compared to all the other companies, we have conductivity that's at least a factor of two or three higher than the competition. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks for talking Looking to forward. us. Okay.